morning, uh, what we're, we're short people this morning, right here. people are away, so you look around you a little bit this morning, and uh, think, notice who, who, you're, who usually you see around you, and then remember to pray for them, maybe see how, I'll give them a call and see how they're doing. Sometimes, you know, we, we have, uh, uh, we have good, really full Sundays, and then, and then one Sunday we might have a smaller crowd, you're all right here on on 
this, this God. In fact, he called, they call him the son of this God. Therefore, verse 26, don't be afraid of them, since they are, there is nothing covered that won't be uncovered, and nothing hidden that won't be made known. What I tell you in the dark, in the dark speak in the light. What you bear, or what you hear in a whisper, proclaim on the housetops. Don't fear those who will kill the body, but, but are not able to kill the soul. Rather, fear him who is able to destroy both soul and the body in hell. Aren't you spared of soul for a penny? Yet one of them falls to the ground, the, the, probably, yet one of them uh, falls to the ground without the Father's consent. But even the hairs of your head have all been counted. Don't be afraid, therefore, you are worth more than the sparrows. Now this week, you know, as we look at this section of scripture, you know, you go, well, I don't know if that's really where I want to get to. But I get to pick up a word in the last, very last verse of this section of scripture. It says, therefore, you are worth more than, than many sparrows. What's the word worth mean? Well, if you take the word worth and look at other ways that we can use that, we, we find the word like value, merit, appeal, significance, attraction, importance, and, and meaning. What, it, what this means then is to be a child of, of God, it, that you are well worth more than anything else in this world. That you have value, that you have merit, that you have appeal, that you have significance, attraction, importance, and meaning. God doesn't throw you out to the out to the wolves, so to speak, and, and uh, doesn't care about what happens to you. He loves you more than you could ever imagine. So we look at this section of scripture and we go, well, what does this all mean? Well, we think of what Christ what Christ is here for us. He says in there, don't expect more than what I receive. You know, often in the world today, we're told that, that uh, when, um, when we become a Christian in the church world today, is that your life is going to be so much easier, your life is so much better. And it's true, your life is going to be better. Your life is going to be full of peace and joy and abundance, an abundance of love. Yet, here we see in Scripture that we might have to endure some things that we would never thought of. What did Christ do here for you? Well, before we even get to the cross, think about what he endured for you. He was hated by those in his own town. They wanted to stone him to death. He was, when he was arrested, he was beaten. They said even the Pharisees and those all around and those with the guards and so forth he plucked his, pulled his beard out. Have any of you had your hair pulled? I know Madeline and Audrey, Audrey for some reason, loves Madeline's long hair. And if Madeline is sitting next to her, Audrey will reach out to touch her hair and then gets a hold of it and pulls. And it hurts, right? Can you imagine having your, the hairs on your face actually pulled out of, of, right from, the, from its roots? And then he's beaten and he's whipped. And most people would die at that point. And then he goes on. And he carries his own, picks up his own cross. They put a place upon his shoulders. And he carries the thing that's going to kill him. Up to the place where they put him to death on that cross. And then when we come to him in faith, when we become his disciples, he tells us, if this is what they've done to me, why would you expect any better? But, but don't be, don't, don't worry, don't, don't be afraid. Therefore, you are worth more than the sparrows. You're worth more than anything else that He's created in this world. You are, you have value, merit, appeal, significance, attraction, importance, and meaning. In Philippians chapter three, verses seven through eleven, we hear how Paul dealt with this concept, how he was able to to deal with this and how, how we thought about this. And in this section of scripture we see how he sees how it was worthwhile to be a, a suffering servant for Jesus Christ. And if we look at the Paul, at Paul's life and his testimony, we know that Paul was actually stoned about three or four times, that he was beaten, that he was thrown in prison, and that he was, that he was left for dead a number of times. Yet, 
we get to a place like this in, in, section, in a section of scripture in a letter that he's written to, the, to those in, in Philippi and we see that he understands that it was worth it. That he understands that, that he tries to describe to the people of Philip, the church of Philippi that they have value, that they have merit, they have appeal, they have significance, attraction, importance, they have meaning and the worth, their worth in being a suffering servant of Jesus Christ is far worthy, more worth, has more, has more worth than anything else they could ever think of. Let's first, we look at this section of scripture, we look at first, the, I want to take, take a look at, the, at verse 7 and the first verse, part of verse 8 of this chapter, in verse, the chapter 3 of Philippians, and it says, but everything that was gained to me, I have considered to be lost because of Christ. More than that, I also consider everything to be lost in the view of the surpassing value of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord. Worth the cost. Paul realized that all that he had to endure, all that he, all that he had to face, was worth the cost. Because of what? Because he knew Jesus Christ. I don't know what you're facing here. Maybe people are tearing you down. Maybe they're talking behind your back. Maybe things are, you know, they talk about, when you talk about your faith, they, they scorn you, or they give you a hard time. Paul C. says it's worth the cost. All things are worth the cost because of the, of the value of knowing that Jesus Christ is my Lord. You know, he was willing to face whatever he needed to in order to let the world know that <coughs> his Lord was worth following. That this relationship that he had was worth, worth it all. He was willing to go out and do whatever he needed to do and to face whatever he needed to face in order to be able to know, let others know the value of knowing Jesus Christ as Lord. It's worth the cost. I try to think through my, in my life, in my past, what have I given up? What have I endured? What have I faced in order to be a believer in Jesus Christ? And I honestly have to think, think, look back, and I think, well, there's not a whole lot that I've had to really endure. I've never been beaten up for my, my, my beliefs. I've never been uh, fired because I, I'm a Christian. I've never had any of those kinds of things. Yet, I, I wonder, sometimes we get, when we face a little bit of adversity, when we face a little bit of struggle, we go, oh, we back off. Know that that which which uh, Christ brings to us, to know what what he the value that he gives to us, it's worth the, the cost of, of all that we might face. But then we go on and in verse eight and verse nine, and we read this. It says, "Because of him, I've suffered the loss of all things, considered them filth, so that I may." Have Christ. And be found in him not having righteousness of my own from my from the law, but one that is through faith in Christ, in Jesus Christ. Righteousness from God, uh, from God based on faith. It's worth it because he found meaning in his life. It's worth worth it because he, he knew that, that all that that even all that he had given up. And you think what he gave up. He was a man uh, that had status. He was a man that could have went far. He could have went and become uh, one of the religious elite of, the, of his day. He was an intelligent man. He, had, he was a scholarly man. He was a man that, that had uh, uh, such great potential. In other words, in our, in our day, Paul was a man that could have been one of the great uh, Fortune 500 CEOs. Paul could have been one of the, those great leaders that, that everybody looked to for, for answers. He could have been like, um, I don't know, like maybe like the doll of grandma or somebody like that that the world looks up to today. I don't know. Paul had the potential. But Paul said, I was willing to give up all that in order, in order to have Christ because I found that my worth was in Christ. I was willing to give up all that, all that the world sees as important, all that all that the religious world sees important and 
Because what, it, what they, I see them as now is just like filthy rags. Think about that for a minute. Are you willing to throw away all that the world says that you need to have? The big car, the big house, the big job, the big money? In order to have Christ? In order to have light eternal? In order to have light that is more, that is abundant and free? Life that is full of joy? Life that is full of love? Life that is more complete than you could ever get from what the world has to offer? Yet, you see, that's what people strive for in today's world. Are you willing to say that's all the filthy rags? I'm willing to go and take and go down a path that is, that is not even close to what the world has to offer. It may be that I go and live among the lepers, or I go and live in a, in a country that, that is poor and, and, uh, and has nothing. I'm willing to go and have nothing at all. I'm never, you know, not the big house. I'm willing to, to not to have that fancy car. I'm willing to go and all, do all these things. If that's what Christ calls me to. Will your life be more complete if you won the lottery? Think about it before you answer. Because you look at the lives of these Hollywood superstars or these sports athletes who make thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars now. It's amazing. Uh, this The big thing over the summer with uh, this hockey player in New Jersey that he wanted, they were going to give him millions upon millions of dollars to play a game. Now, I love hockey. I watched last night. I sat down and flipped between football and hockey, football and hockey. And I finally went to football because at least there was, there was a little bit of joy in that part of that game because someone won't, the team that won was the team I liked, right? But, you know, we look at all these guys and we, we think that their lives are more complete, but you look at as soon as they're out of the sport and all their money is gone, where, where, where have they got to? How many times have you seen football players or hockey players or sport athletes or movie stars that when they're done, they go to the B list or the D list or whatever you might call it, and their lives are miserable? Was it more complete because it had all the cash and all the money? Not at all. But Paul says that all these things, I consider them now what? Filthy, as filthy, as filthy rags. I consider them as filth. And what is filth? Well, you think about filth and, and that, and, and, that, and they're, it's just rubbish, basically. You know, the, the, when I think of filth, I think of the garbage dump. When I think of filth, I think of of, uh, of the dirt and the mud and, the, and then so forth. When I think of filth, I think of the, the summer when the, at SYC at Summer Youth Celebration when the, the senior high camp week went into the mud pit and played and did a tug of war and they're covered in, they, you, you see these kids and they're covered in head to toe, black, sticky, stinky, gross mud. It was the nastiest thing I've ever seen and it smelled horrible. And then they go into and they try to get themselves cleaned up and they make a bigger mess inside than they did outside. And you know that's filth. It gets on you and it's and it's, it's horrible when you when you when you get a it gets attached to you, it's hard to wash off. If you just if you let that become a part of your life, it becomes it becomes you. And if you you lose perspective of who you are. But Paul realized that his worth was found in Jesus Christ. So it was, it was worth the cost, and it was worth, it, his worth was found in Christ, and he realized that, that it was, all these other things were nothing compared to what I could get when I received Christ, and when I followed him, and, and no matter where he sends me, no matter where he leads me, it was worth it. So I could see men and women, boys and girls, come to faith in Jesus Christ. Paul was willing to endure no matter what he had. Because he goes on in verse 10 and 11 to say his words of pain. Listen to verse 10 and 11. My goal is to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death, assuming that I will somehow reach the resurrection from among the dead. It was worth the pain. So it was worth the cost. His worth was found in Christ and it was worth the pain. You see, Paul realized that everything that he had to face, it was okay. Because he knew that one day it would all go away. And the path that he had gone, he'd find the glory of him. The pain that he endured would no longer be there. Because the glory of God. You know, you can you might face hardship. 
you might be ridiculed because you're a believer in Jesus Christ. Your family might disown you because you're a believer in Jesus Christ. Your family might turn their back on you because you're a believer in Jesus Christ. But it's worth it. Some of you met my friend Wash these candles. Wash and I went to school together, and him and I would always tease each other. He, I, I call him Waggy because that's how his name was called, and he would call me some other things, and it wasn't very nice. But, but uh, you know, he, he, we teased each other. But here's a man that has an amazing story. And let me share it a little bit with you if you've never heard it before. And if you've heard it, I apologize. But, but Washdi was born in, in Egypt. He was a, a, from a Bedouin family. They were Muslim of, by faith, or Islamic if you like, or Islamic, whatever is the right way of saying it. And Washdi grew up a, a very religious man, religious boy, a religious young man. Went to university and he would he, he met some individuals that led him to understand and to understand who Jesus Christ was. And Washdi received faith and, and uh, received Jesus Christ through faith. And he and Washdi went on to to be able, uh, to to begin to learn what it was all about being Christian and follow Christ. <coughs> and one day, when his family found out, they basically disowned him. They said, "To us, Washdi is dead." Now I know some of you have hard hard situations and rough family situations, and I understand that. But in this situation, I don't think it could get any worse. His family said, you're dead to us. You're no longer alive. We don't want to have anything to do with you. And, uh, and we, we don't want to know uh, anything about you or anything like that. And then one day, they turned around. And that would be good. But if you get a chance to go and read that, I would encourage you to do that. You get the whole, whole story. But one day, they, they turned him over to the authorities. And then because of his faith in Jesus Christ, he was thrown into prison. And Washti was, was sentenced to death because of his faith. He was to be hung. And uh, this was um, quite a while ago, and uh, Gaddafi was in, was in power in Libya, and the Libyans invaded Egypt. And the day that Washti was to be hung, they invaded, the Libyans invaded the country. And they opened up the prison doors and they let the captives go. Washti escaped in that country. And now Washti is very, very involved uh, as a pastor and, and, and speaker. He works with uh, Arabic people around uh, the world and, and in Canada and uh, preaches on a regular basis. And every time I see him, he has such great joy. I've never seen a man with such joy. But he's still a man that his family is. He's still a man to his family and dead. But if you ask Washington, it's worth it. It's worth it because he knows the surpassing in all the faith or the grace and love that comes in knowing Jesus Christ as a Savior. I don't know your situation. Actually, I do know some of your situations. I don't know everything that's going on in your life. But I encourage you to consider the work that you have in him. People may disown you. Family may turn their back on you. The world may, may make your life visible. They may fire you because of your faith. They may, they may uh, even do worse because of who you believe in. But to follow Jesus, to be his disciple, may be the biggest price you pay in your life. It may cost you more than you thought, but as Paul would tell you, it is worth it all. <coughs> if I suffer for Jesus Christ, that's okay. For, for what he has to offer is better than what, what, than what, I, what I might get by becoming the richest man on earth, or having that biggest house on the street, or being the king or president of a nation. For all these things will pass away, but what God has to offer you and I, each and every one of us, has more, far more value and is more priceless and more beautiful. It is eternal life in the presence of Him. They can take my life. They can take all that I have in this world. Satan can take, take me out of, out of, 
take me out and, and hurt me and, and do all kinds of things. But, at one, but there's one who's paid the price for my life and made it all work. John chapter 10, verse 27 through 29. I want us to look at that passage of scripture, and this is where we'll end our, our time this morning. John chapter 10, verses 27 through 29. Hear the word of Jesus Christ. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish, ever. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father has given them to me. <coughs> my Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. The Father and I are one. Whatever you face today, Paul understood that it was worth following Jesus Christ. Are you his sheep? Do you hear his voice calling you? Are you willing to follow him no matter where he might send you? Are you willing to go with him no matter what you might face? What are you chasing after today? What, are, what is driving you today? What is it that you're, you're desiring?